We're going to be diving in shortly, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for game number one of our series to begin. It is DKN going out against, or going up against, rather, sieves out for Harambe. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dry Arabia. We're here once again, enjoying this open, this open plan map. Let's just put it that way, open plan map. <laughs> and, the, and as you pointed out, players are spawning relatively close to each other compared to where you would usually see them in team game settings. So you can definitely, to a certain extent, have one player defend both players and then the other one just either boom or slang. We'll have to see if that's going to be the case. But as we discussed prior to this game, the big question mark is how you're going to synergize your Abbasid pick with the HRE for DFP or DKN rather. Yeah, this is definitely a, a curious factor. So obviously when you look at the French and the English, you can go, okay, well, the French make knights and the English make longbows and that's beautiful synergy. But then you look at the Holy Roman Empire and the Abbasid dynasty and you just kind of scratch your head. You're wondering, well, what do these two civs do well together? And I can't put my finger on it. Any civilization can make archers. Any civilization can make horsemen. But there's nothing here that really gravitates towards either of those directions. The only thing that I could come up with remotely that might have some synergy is that Numidan, as the Abbasid dynasty, collects food faster from berries. And obviously berries are a guaranteed food source. They're quite safe as well. So he could be looking to spend that food or send that food to his ally. And we see now some beautiful sheep coming through for Numidan. And he won't drop it off back at home, I assume. This is the this is the time and the place to be a good teammate. You just have to drop it off at your teammate. Your Abbasids, you will be on berries anyways. Might as well just give it to your teammate, but looks like he might actually end up being greedy. Just drop it off back at home. Whoop. Yeah. Let's see? Oh. Oh. Nope. Oh. There we go. He's going to be oh. a good teammate. What a what a nice guy. But the age up's now coming through. GKS going with the council hall. No surprises there. So yeah, pretty quick age up here as well. Two minutes, 20 age up time. That, that is quick, political. Yeah, I feel like we've been talking a lot about the civilization combination of Divine and Numadon. But on the other side, we have a standard civ combination of English and French. And... From their perspective, they have to be prepared for a sling-style strategy like we discussed. So, it makes a lot of sense to try and be very aggressive with longbows and knights. And, as you said, the way that you would do that is by kind of rushing Feudal Age over here for GKS. No farms in Dark Age, just go straight to Feudal. Wouldn't be surprised to see longbows pop out immediately as he reaches Feudal. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Uh, over on the other side of the map, we do have our age-ups coming through. Numidan, I'm curious what age up he's going with is it just going to be the economic wing i mean most of the time it is going to be the economic wing i can't imagine it being anything different let's take a look and see what he's clicked up on trade wing trade wing trade wing let's go it is uh, economic uh, wing <laughs> okay i'm, <laughs> I'm not surprised hope. all right let's have a look at the arkan chapel let's give this one a rating we haven't rated any arkan chapels today yet litacor time for us to give a rating to that Arkham Chapel in the south of the map. Let's see how it's positioned. I know it's up against a wood line. But that's it. It's <laughs> it's it's a wood line and some berries. I mean, you can't really ask for more than this with the map spawn he has. In, in fact, you could have put it down here. You could have put it down on the south side, but I guess this is going to require you to make it further away from your base and you're playing against a French player. Do you really want to do that? Probably not. It's also the fact that in the long run with the HRE, most of your gold is going to come from relics, or at least that's the ideal plan. So boosting your gold miners probably has lower value than just boosting the food under the TC, the berries, and the lumberjacks. All right. Well, look, I'm looking to see if we see anything too crazy. At this stage, not really. Fresh food stuff's coming in. Wheelbarrow also coming through for Numidan. And a barrack's going to get dropped down. Hmm. Are they just... <laughs> Don't tell me that they're just looking to play like Archer Spearman. <laughs> Can you imagine, Nuts. like, the level of analysis we've done? And they're like, yeah, we'll just pick <laughs> just pick HRE and Abbasid and we'll make Archer's Spearman. It'll be fine. I would be surprised to see HRE Archers. I think, in fact, that's an understatement. I would be shocked. In fact, it feels more like they're just going to play a very turtley and campy game. Divine is mining stone, dropping some towers. He's going to have some arrow slit towers. And on the other side, Spearman defense only to deal with the Knights. Big question is, how do you deal with the Longbows? Because there's quite a lot of them coming through already, and... Because there is no army on the field for Divine or Numadon, 
you can risk sending out these longbows one by one because no one's going to intercept them. Yeah, that's exactly it. Keep in mind, we're at the five minute mark right now. And these longbows are right outside the base of Divine. But Divine has read this. He knows that it's coming. And that's why we do see the outpost has been dropped down over on the west side of this wood line. But over on the right side of this wood line, it is open for a villager to come in and begin towering up like he's playing the Mongols right now. Yeah, this is a great position. Yeah, the it's, Arkham a, it's a really right good staging ground. It's not just the Arkham yeah. Chapel, but look at the berry spots for Numadon. You can use this tower as a staging ground to harass both. So the value here is massive. And you see, in the end, we might end up with horsemen from the HRE, but I never really was a fan of that, to be honest. It's a double horseman opening. We saw a, a horseman coming out from Numadon. Uh, and we've also got horsemen coming out on the south side from GKS. So this is one of the, the theoried counters to Longbow Knight, is to just go double horsemen. And you basically just simply, you, you, you just want to kill all of the longbowmen, use your mobility to kill the longbowmen, kill the reinforcing longbowmen, and then as long as you've got enough spearmen not to die to the knights, you're going to be fine. The problem is that by doing this, it's, uh, it's a little bit all in, I guess is probably the best way to say it, because if you do make any mistakes, uh, you are left in a very dire, dire strait. Yeah, we talked about the theory of civilization selections prior to this game. So it's very possible that they are trying to play this all in style, partly because they do have much better, much more straightforward civilization picks for the remaining maps. And they just say, OK, let's use these two civilizations here as kind of throwaways. And these two civilizations match up against French and English with the unit composition that we use the best. So could be along those lines as well. But if they both go horsemen, wouldn't be surprised to see Spearman being added rather soon from GKS. Yeah, definitely could be the case. Uh, but interestingly, there, there doesn't seem to be any horsemen. He's got the stable, but it's just going to be for knights. He's trying to get up to the castle age, but you can see how slow this push is happening. Or rather how slow this, uh, not really a push, but rather a uh, an age up. He's struggling at the moment. We're at the seven minute mark. I mean, in an ideal world, he should have been up a, a minute ago. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he has two defensive towers on that gold mine, but the fact that you have to garrison your villagers every once in a while still slows down your advance towards costing. You see, he actually has 15 on gold right now. He's so desperate for gold out there. And as you said, timing is crucial over here. You can't delay it as much. And this could backfire because now you see knights plus longbows could easily focus on Numadon. So that slower costlage from Divine could be something that really gets the punishment through Numadon. Yeah, but he's still going to hit the castle agents. It's, it's going to be a Burgrave Palace Ooh. that he's going for here. Uh, so might just be looking for men-at-arms to uh, with, uh, with with heavy maces. We did see that, see that they were quite effective um, up against the uh, the French earlier today. Uh, but the key difference being that he was paired up with a Marlian. So he was able to just produce like a madman. And he was slung. It was a full sling from a Malian player, whereas here you have an Abyss player. Now, do keep in mind that Numadon may still switch to a sling, but the moment he does that, he's going to have his eco exposed to the knights and the longbows. I, I don't have high hopes for this, I'm not going to lie. I feel like yeah. if Neza and GKS plays this well, those men at arms should not be able to accomplish much. I think the name of the game is using those knights to get some raiding done on Numadon because Numadon is well spread out. That needs to be punished. If that goes unpunished, we could have a good situation here for Divine and Numadon. Yeah, for me, the, the main thing is I just want to make sure Nezer and GKS are always holding hands. They can't be leaving each other's sides. They need to be staying with it the whole time. But it feels like... Yeah, the, the numbers here not looking amazing at the moment for GKS. He's only sitting on 15 longbows, 16 longbows now. They did get eaten a little bit before, but uh, he's slowly adding in more. But not, not crazy numbers at this point. Yeah, the concern for them is that they're not really doing any damage. And one of the key principles of Age of Empires is that if you make army but you don't do any damage with it, it's wasted resources. So you need to find ways to do damage. And finally, we are seeing that happen over here. This is exactly what they need. Pin Numadon inside his base and punish his team for not having a standing army right now. Yeah, that's exactly it. We haven't seen any damage done whatsoever this game yet. He's forced a, a couple of lumberjacks away from this wood line and moved on to the other side. And sure, now the Arkham Chapel's not buffing up those villages. But this is a small price to pay. 
ideally, Divine's reached the castle age. He, he's looking okay from here. I mean, the, the main concern that I had was that Neza and GKS would just roll over the top of these two, but they haven't been rolling at all. No, they're not just, at all. They've, 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 yeah, they've, they've just kind of chilled for the moment, haven't they? And this leaves a tremendous amount of time for Divine to build up the men at arms. And don't forget, unless Numudan throws away these horsemen over here, he's going to have a decent force. He's up to 16 spearmen. He has some horsemen. And when you combine the men at arms, the horsemen, the spearmen, they could overrun whatever Neza and GKS has on the field. Yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, this is, um, yeah, it's it's looking concerning. And I think, have we got heavy maces coming out now for the men at arms as well? I don't know whether we're actually going to be able to see the heavy maces uh, on the UI because they are sieging at the moment. Yeah, the, we do have the heavy mace. Oh, uh, we've got a uh, two-handed... Yeah, heavy maces is through. So they get that extra bonus against the knights. And we do have chivalry coming through for Neza. So definitely the, the right choice. I think that chivalry is 100% the correct play to go when you're playing this kind of thing because you want to be rinsing your charges through, moving your low health knights back. For sure. Look at that. They already have a pretty decent numbers and good text as well. So there's the defense upgrades. There's the maces. And this is what I was waiting for. A pincer move. Beautiful surround out there, Ozzy. Could easily wipe out most of the longbows. Yeah. Knights just absolutely nowhere. They need to be. They needed to be screening right then. And they weren't screening. And so the longbows just get eaten alive. Uh, and th this is what I was talking about earlier, where it just comes down to uh, the higher level players just going to be out able to outplay their enemy. Even if they don't have a better strategy, they've just got better skills, better timing. And unfortunately, Neza left GKS alone. That was the problem. I, I mentioned earlier, these guys need to be holding hands the entire time. They can't be stepping away from each other. And unfortunately, they do step away. And immediately, Numadan jumps on top of them. Yeah, if they wanted to raid, they should have done that two, three minutes ago when you didn't have a big standing army for Numadan. And Really, the problem that they face now is that they allowed Numadon and Divine to both build up armies inside their base. They didn't punish them having expansions to the south and to the east. They didn't really punish them for just camping inside their base and slowly building up numbers. If you compare it to some other games where the Burgrave play fails, the reason why it usually fails is because the man arms are coming in one by one and they have to engage instantly. Here, that wasn't the yeah. case. You got to 50 and men at arms without a single bit of fighting, and now you have tuned weapons, heavy maces, 50 men at arms, supported by a formidable Abbasid army as well. Yeah, yeah, and this is where it gets really hard. Because the spearmen, as well as the horsemen, are going to be able to provide that utility that the men at arms need to help them out. Obviously, spearmen are going to help out a whole bunch against the any the cavalry, but the horsemen are going to be the main the the main uh, what's the word that I'm looking for the main damage dealer when it comes to chasing down those longbow yes they will be and they are also too super tanky we have seen that in a previous set you can just dive under town centers and well you are going to eventually lose them shutting down the opponent's eco non-stop for the sake of losing men and arms in this scenario is perfectly acceptable yeah yeah agreed yeah, th this is where it starts to get really difficult because now the pump is just stopping or ju just happening non-stop. Relics are starting to get picked up as well. So we can see that uh, D I think Divine's picked up his first relic at this point. Burgrave being a, a really strong lemma. Age ups obviously come through now for Neza. He'll be thinking about maybe moving into Royal Bloodlines as a potential option. Could be a decent counter as well considering the fact that He's playing against the Holy Roman Empire. Obviously, the heavy maces are, are quite strong here. Cantled saddles could be a, a, a strong, a strong upgrade for him in this position. Nice little raid on that north side. Yeah, raids are good. Problem is that they need to find a way to stop this, and GKS has nothing to stop this way. Trying to go for more longbows at the ranges, even finds a good choke point. But it's a flood of men in arms, and it is a counter unit to the longbows at this stage. You can start shutting down those farms and. Neza, he can try to do the same on the other side, but it's going to be substantially less effective. And now you even have the Abyssid army now coming in. Wouldn't be surprised to see some battering grams being added by those spears. Yeah, there's so many units here for our Abyssid player. Look at look at the amount of units he's got. Uh, but it's not even going to matter. The men at arms are just rampaging through the base now. Charge trying to come through Neza with just a, only a handful of knights just going to get cleaned up, fighting against the spears, not having a good time. And it look, it, I feel like they're probably going to be tapping out any second here. When you get cleaned up like that, there's not really much you're going to be able to do. 
Yeah, look at that. It's just a mess. It's a rainbow of colors inside the base of GKS, but he has not a single villager working on those farms. And it's going to take too much time to clean up with the town center fire. Look at that. Every single villager has to be pulled back. It's not about holding off this wave. It's about holding off the next one. And they they won't be able to do that, plain and simple. He's giving him a bit of a runaround at the moment, but he's just he's buying time. And look at the villagers that are going down. Watch how many villagers get killed here. He's on, they're on 84, they were 85 just a second ago. They're down to 82 now. And now the men at arms are going to be moving over towards that wood line. That, that is not, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's not pretty. <laughs> and good game does get called. So, we get the answer to our question. How was it going to go down? We know now what DKN had in store. It was just a simple fast castle coming through from the HRE player. And the Abbasid just staying one base, making lots of units. Go the economic wing. Fair enough. Makes sense. Yeah. This build I think at be... the end, though... Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, so this build can be punished by the French and English, make no mistake. Problem was that at the beginning, Neza and GKS were cautious. And rightfully so, as you said, they're facing apparently stronger players than they are. So they respected them. They didn't want to throw away the longbows, the knights. But by the time they really started raiding, it was too late. Numudan got away with multiple berry patches despite not having essentially any standing army. He had a few spearmen, sure thing, but Longbows and Knights could have overwhelmed him. And the same thing for Divine. He didn't have to fight with his men at arms until he reached a number of like 15, 20, and from that point on, sure thing it was a snowball. So it was the fact that really Numudan and Divine got away with a very totally game in which they didn't really make a lot of army, yet they didn't really get punished for it either. 